honored to receive uh, the TCA award. I'd like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to give this talk. I will talk about single uh, image super resolution via sparse representations. This is a joint work with my supervisor, Professor Mikiel Ad from the CS department. So let me first of all present uh, the problem we would like to solve. So we, we assume the following degradation model. We have a high resolution image that undergoes blur using some known low pass filter and then it, it, it decimated meaning you take every second or third pixel in each direction, and we assume a noise-free setup. So you get a low-resolution image, and our goal is to go back from the low resolution to the high resolution. This means we want more pixels, and we want very few artifacts, and to retain high quality. So this formulates our inverse problem, and if you want to develop an algorithm for solving such a problem, then you are given the low-resolution image, you assume the blur kernel and scale factor are known, and you just plug in your favorite image model or prior, and you can develop an algorithm. So this is the result you get. More pixels, few artifacts, sharp edges, and high quality. And a lot of priors have been suggested previously in the literature for solving this type of inverse problems. So the most popular priors are image smoothness, self-similarity within the image and across scales, sparsity in different domains and multi-scale approaches, and we will focus, as the, my title implies, on the sparsity prior. And we will sp uh, specifically look at the specific formulation of the sparsity prior. But before we do so, I would like to show an overview of our approach. So first of all, we perform B-cubic interpolation uh, on uh, the low-resolution image. On the right, you see the ground truth high-resolution image. And uh, on the left, you see the recovered image after B-cubic interpolation. Both have the same number of pixels, but you can see the left one is much degraded with respect to the right one. So we suggest increasing the image reconstruction quality, and we suggest doing so using a multi-level scheme. So each, each of the levels in our scheme will improve the image reconstruction gradually, a bit by bit. After one level, this is the result we get. After two levels, this is the result. Three levels and four levels. So at the end of the scheme, this is the result we get. As I said before, high quality, very few artifacts. So how does it work? Let's dive in into one of the levels and see, uh, see the stages in this level. So given an input image, we extract overlapping patches. Then we cluster the patches. <clears throat> then we apply the prediction model associated with this cluster on all the patches assigned, uh, associated with, assigned to this uh, cluster. And then once we went over all the clusters, we have predictions for all the patches in the image. And we can recover the image from the patches by averaging on the overlaps. So now I will focus on the prediction block. And we will follow the sparse representation paradigm for this prediction. So this means we are assuming that an image patch can be approximated as a linear combination of a few atoms coming from a dictionary D. So you have a matrix D. Each column in the matrix is an atom. And in this example, you see that an image patch is approximated using three atoms from the dictionary. Each is multiplied by a non-zero coefficient. And the non-zero coefficients are uh, organized in a sparse uh, representation vector alpha. Now, for the single image super resolution, we will make use not only on one dictionary, or we will make use of a dictionary pair, one for the low quality patches and one for the high quality patches. So there are two dictionaries. And for the prediction, we will predict the sparse representation of the high quality patch from the sparse representation of the low quality patch. So we have a, a statistical model which is based on a restricted Boltzmann machine. This is a graphical model which is very well known and well used in uh, the neural network field. It was suggested about 30 years ago by uh, Smolensky and Hinton. And uh, this is our statistical model. So basically we have three stages for the prediction. Given an input low quality patch, we first of all perform sparse coding using a dictionary DL. We get a sparse representation alpha L. We make the prediction. We get a predictor, a predictor for alpha age. And then we do synthesis uh, using a dictionary DH, and we get a high quality patch. So now I want to go over these three stages and to convince you that we, we implement this very efficiently and show you some details. So for sparse coding, we simply apply, apply on the input image a set of orthogonal filters, and this gives you the vector alpha L for all of the patches in the image. Then we have prediction and synthesis, and now I would like to show you the, how, how the predictor works. So this is a signal flow diagram of the optimal predictor arising from our model. This is the MMEC estimator of each entry in alpha H given alpha L, and you see that this 
predictor involves only inner products and nonlinearities, so it's very efficient. And for synthesis, we take the predicted coefficients and multiply each of them by, uh, by the corresponding atom, and we get an estimate for the patch. Okay, so now I would like to take another uh, look at uh, our approach. And actually, we have constructed a multi-layer feedforward neural network. So in this type of networks, there are two aspects to consider. The first one is the architecture of the network, and the second is training. So I would like to explain what is unique in our approach. So in terms of uh, architecture, the architecture of each level follows directly for, uh, from a statistical uh, prediction model. So it's a very solid model and solid architecture. And in terms of training, we train each level in a supervised manner, aiming at getting a better and increasingly better image reconstruction quality. So in both of these, uh, these two aspects, we are actually quite different from the common trend in deep learning. Deep learning will be discussed thoroughly in the uh, afternoon panel. So it looks like deep learning. It's not really deep learning. And I would like to convince you that actually this works. So some results for uh, the starfi starfish image and the scale factor of two. This is the result of BQP interpolation. This is our result. And you can see both numerically and visually the improvement here. Similarly, for the Foreman image and the scale factor of three, you can see the enhancement of edges and the quality improves. And similarly for the Lena image, B cubic and our result. So, so far I uh, discussed single image super resolution. Now I want to show you quite surprisingly that this actually is beneficial for compressing images at high rates. So suppose you are given this Foreman image and you want to compress it by a very high rate of 54. So one way you can go, you can, go, you can use any uh, JPEG, JPEG 2K standard and just compress the high resolution image. But, and I will show you the results of this suggestion in the next slide. But for the moment, let, let's see another approach. You can decrease resolution and compress the low resolution image. So we apply on the low resolution image JPEG 2K. And actually, this is not really our idea because this already happens on your smartphone. When you send an image using WhatsApp, actually uh, the resolution is decreased and then compressed. And when you send this image, the recipient of your message gets the image, he decompresses it, and then it, maybe he wants to zoom in on the details. So when he zoom in, zooms in, actually he performs B-cubic interpolation. And this is the result of B-cubic interpolation. We suggest replacing the last block by our scheme for single image super resolution, and this is the result we get. So B-cubic and our result, and you can see once again the improvements and enhancements of edges, now, at this point, you can say, well, this is not a very good result. There are a few artifacts here. But remember, this is an image arising from a compressed version by a very high ratio of 54. So let's compare it with JPEG uh, applied, JPEG 2K applied directly on the high resolution image. And when you do so, this is the result you get, a lot of nasty artifacts. And our approach gives you a better result, both numerically in terms of PSNR and visually. Another result for the butterfly image, once again, you see the improvement in image quality, both numerically and visually. And another example is for the linear image, compressing the high resolution image directly or our approach. So you can see the improvement in the lips and the, on the head. So that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have uh, time for a short uh, question.